Hi, I'm Robert van Lorm from Xebia Mobile. I'm going to be talking about setting up continuous integration with Jenkins, JHUnit and Xcode 4. So all the ingredients I have here are a, a terminal, a web browser and of course Xcode 4. And what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to automatically run our unit tests. And as you can see in the previous video, I already have some unit tests running, the test bar and test foo, and I can run them manually. But the goal here is to run them automatically. As soon as I change some code and check it in, into Git, into our SCM system, uh, Jenkins will pick it up and uh, test, build and test the code. So first of all, download the Jenkins war file from uh, the Jenkins website and just start it up with java minus jar jenkins.war. Next, go to localhost port 8080 in your web browser and you should see the Jenkins interface. Well, before we get started, before we create a new job, and a new job is basically running uh, and building um, our uh, iOS project and testing it, we first need to get a Git plugin. And a Git plugin is basically the plugin which checks for changes uh, to the code after you've checked it in, and it will respond to those changes. Just go to the uh, plugin section and then find the Git plugin Just select it and at the bottom, just click install. This will automatically uh, install the plugins. Once that's done, uh, you need to restart Jenkins to, uh, for the uh, plugins to be uh, actually uh, loaded. So currently restarting Jenkins, just hit Ctrl C and uh, start it up again with the same command, java minus jar jenkins.war. And now we're ready to create the new job. So first of all, select build a free software project because we don't have Maven or any of that other Java stuff. And I'm going to name my project, of course, my first DDD project, which is in line with my project name in Xcode. So we're going to be using Git, and Git will look at our repository. It will look for changes. Of course, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm selecting a local repository in my local file system but uh, in a production situation, you would, of course, use a server. Next, it's uh, poll the SEM. Uh, poll is basically uh, after how many minutes, for example, hours or days, do you want Git to check if there are any changes? And if there are any changes, start. So next thing is uh, we're going to do the build itself. And um, here we are going to execute a shell, and that execute shell is the uh, sh shell itself, and then we're going to execute build and test.sh, and that is going to invoke our build itself. Of course, we also want to have some results. We want to see what tests are failing, for example. And for that, we're going to publish JUnit test results report, and we're going, going to tell it where those test results can be found. So now I need to create the build and test file. So I'm going to uh, my uh, directory. I'm going to be creating files through VI. And first is the build and test.sh. Now just uh, pause this video here and uh, type it. Uh, so we're going to uh, invoke make, and first we're gonna clean it. 
we're going to set some variable and then we're going to invoke make again with with a test argument. So there's the file. Because it's a shell script, I'd like to make it also executable. It's not really necessary, but if you want to invoke it from the command line itself, not through Jenkins. So now you can see that the build and test is executable and we're still missing stuff because we're using make, we need to create a make file, which will tell make what to do with our project. So in the make file, just download the uh, contents from uh, the GH unit uh, website. And there are two things which are important. That's a target. It has to correspond with the uh, target you uh, defined in your own project. So here I have a target tests, of course, and it's either for the device or simulator. The other thing which is important at the bottom, you see um, the uh, minus SDK. And uh, currently um, it's uh, at the iPhone simulator 4.3 because I want to run the tests in the simulator itself. So I'm compiling against the iPhone simulator 4.3. So let's save this file. Okay, so what do we have? We have a build and test sh and a make file. Now, next thing that we're going to do is we need to execute another file from within our tests target. And this file will actually uh, invoke the unit test runner. So we're going to ask uh, the test target to run the run test.sh file itself. And I'm using a uh, absolute path, but it's more wise to use your project path there because otherwise it won't run on a build server. So now we're going to create the uh, run tests file and just copy the contents from the JH unit website. Again, make it executable. And now, nice thing we can do is we can execute make clean. So that will clean our build and we can execute make test, which will actually invoke uh, the building of the project and actually run the unit test. Oh, so there is an error. And the error is that because I have spaces in my project name, I need to add double quotes there. So that's a, uh, if you don't have do uh, spaces in your uh, directory names, it's not necessary. And here you can see that our test has been run from make. So it's always good to know before we actually start using uh, Jenkins. Next up is checking it all in, into Git. And uh, one thing I want to do is I want to exclude the build directory because I don't need that to be under uh, version control because that's basically the output of all the building and testing. So now we're going to uh, add all the files to Git with a git add. And now I'm going to commit all those files. Checking in files for Jenkins CI. Okay, hitting git status again. So there are no files changed or files needed to be committed. So it's completely clean. And now back to Jenkins. And it's going to invoke the build and test.sh. So let's hit save. So this is our first job. 
it's called the my first tdd project and what i'm going to do is i'm going to trigger it manually by uh, hitting that button over there schedule a build so it's currently it's checking all the files out into its own directory and then building it and then running the unit tests ah but it failed so why is that it's because i'm missing the jh unit framework and for that to um to automatically uh, make xcode build pick up the JSUN IO framework, I um, need to add a setting into the build settings of the tests target. And that's in the framework search paths. I also need to include the directory where the uh, framework can be found. Again, this is in absolute path. If you're using a server, please be careful, make use of variables there. Don't use absolute paths, because otherwise it won't work on other, on other systems. So let's commit the change. Give it a nice description there. Let's go back. And the only thing we need to do is wait because it will automatically pick up the change and then build and run tests. And currently you can see it's successful. It's not raining anymore, it's cloudy. You can see uh, in uh, the build and test that the test bar and test foo have both passed. So for every build that is run you can see the results. So, for example, let's break the build by making the uh, test case fail. So we're going to compare foo with bar, which isn't equal, of course. Just change the code, check it in again, and Jenkins will automatically pick it up. So currently setting checking in a failing test. And you can see it's red again. So why is it red? Because you obviously want to know, hey, there's a failing test there. You might also have a compilation error. It will also tell you when that will, when that's happened. But the uh, latest test result says, well, wait, there's one failure. We choose one new. Which one has failed? It's the test foo. So foo should be equal to bar. So it's also, again, with a nice description. You can also see the uh, change, which I checked in, which is also also really nice. And who did it, of course. So you can kick the person. Actually made the test fail. Let's change it back to foo again, and you'll see that it will become green, or in case of Jenkins, blue, which is a bit odd. So I'll fix the failing test again, checked it in, and Jenkins will automatically pick up the change. See, it's in the build queue, and now it's actually built. You can see the test result trend. So it was one, now it's zero again, no failures, which is what we like. So these are all the different check-ins. You can look at the detail if you want to. So this is basically how you uh, set up Jenkins with JSUnit and Xcode 4 and Git. This is very powerful. Um, I suggest you uh, use uh, TDD because it actually improves your software. So this is how you set up Jenkins CI, JSUnit and Xcode 4 and using Git as an SCM. Hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.